to all my TV technicians, regular technicians, my viewers, the art TV repair course, the first module is completed. There is actually 14 lessons. All right, and each lesson is about 20 minutes long. All right, so a total of about five hours on the first module, which is switch mode power supply, primary side. And this course is killer. Just the comments I'm going to show you from my students will prove it. My point was here to, on this particular module, was to get you to the point where you will be able to troubleshoot any power supply board. And the way I do it is pretty much step by step. That is the art. Teaching you how it works from the power cord all the way to the end of the power supply or the, the whole course teaching you how the TV works from the power supply or power cord all the way to the power button in that particular order. So the thing is, I'm going to just talk about myself, and I know there are a lot of other technicians who are kind of like in the same predicament. Even though I've been working on televisions for 30 years, it'll be 30 years next year in 2024 that I, have been, that I would have been working on televisions. When it came to a power supply board, like say if I had a dead set, it, anything past um, me checking for shorted MOSFETs, checking for swollen capacitors, checking for bad solder connections, uh, what else, or just checking like voltages, like checking the standby voltage. I didn't know anything past that, right? So I would just order the whole power supply board. And like this course here, it didn't just something that I just like get a, got a bunch of videos and just threw up here to complete the course. Uh, I really put a lot of thought in this course. I've been working on this course for about three years, pretty much buying ebooks uh, which were most of them way over my head right as far as what they were talking about but verifying stuff on actual televisions and doing outlines and stuff of what i wanted to teach and i finally had the pre-launch video about uh two months ago almost and i only had two lessons completed and now i have there you see there is actually 14 lessons completed so far each of the lessons are about 20 minutes long and so you've got about five hours of training on just the primary side of the switch mode power supply. Because believe it or not, about 90% of your power supply board problems are going to be on the primary side. So I'm just giving you an example of a viewer, one of my YouTube viewers, he asked me a question a while ago about a TV and the 12 volt line and um, the 5 volt standby. And a answer his questions and I said hey why don't you enroll in the course because that way and you'll get a better understanding completely right and he told me he commented me back and said you know I'm not trying to spend money that's too pricey uh, I'll just you know watch YouTube videos and <laughs> learn it from there but the problem with that yeah you can watch YouTube videos on switching MOSFETs pulse width modulators uh, optocouplers, uh, PFC circuits, but the problem is you're not going to be able to put it together, right? And so if you're using a device and you're talking about you're using one device, which in this case is a television, and you're putting it all together, then you're going to better understand how it works. So before I proceed, uh, I've got some really amazing students. Um, they've been motivating me. You know, this is this was like a task for me, like to complete this course. Now it's fun, all right? I got a lot of TV repair techs. The power supply uh, portion of this course is not, you know, you can, not just for working on television. I mean, you can take this course and, and anything that uses a switch mode power supply board, you're going to be able to troubleshoot it and fix it. I can almost guarantee that you're going to learn, you're going to be like 50%, at least 50% to 100% more proficient at troubleshooting power supply boards down to the component level. And that's pretty much a guarantee just for readings of reviews uh, and comments from my students. Now, what's going to happen is this course, The Art of Troubleshooting and Repairing Modern Television, is the art is obviously learning how the television works. Okay, that's the art of troubleshooting and repairing any device that you work on. Okay, if you don't know how it works, you're going to be pretty much guessing that stuff and changing boards. Uh, but if you know how it works, 
that's the only way you're going to be able to troubleshoot anything to the component level. So this course, I've been putting out about one module, I'm sorry, one lesson a week. All right, I had two about two months ago. Now I'm up to 14 lessons in this first module. And then I'll be going into switch more power supply secondary side. With the next two weeks, that should be done. And we're going to go over main boards and timing control TCOM boards. So this course would be priced anywhere between 197 and 247 all right, depending on, you know, what I feel like. Some of my students, a uh, couple of my students have been telling me I can get 297 easily because they know I'm going to have, because I know, they know that once the course is completed, I'm going to have an affiliate program and whoever re refers their link and gets, and gets someone to purchase the course, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give them half. Okay. I'm going to give you guys half. Uh, but obviously you have to be a student in the course first. But, uh, right now it's at a special pre-launch price because it's not, it's not fully completed. All right, and once you're in, at the price that I have listed right now, I've been going up. I've only went up ten dollars since I since the pre-launch. Then you're gonna be you gonna you are going to be in for life once the course is completed. So first, I'm going to show you guys some reviews or comments from my students. These are actual comments, and then I'm going to show you a demonstration about 15 minutes of live footage inside this first module, this first completed module which is switch mode power supplies, primary side. Guys, don't just take my word for it or the students' word for it. Um, you're actually, I'm going to actually show you about 15 minutes worth of raw footage in the course. The course is not going to be, and what is not all one lesson. I'm going to, I'm kind of like going all over the place in different lessons. But the actual last portion of it is kind of like a little mini course and um, power up at the correction circuit. So hopefully we get some value out of that. Now, keep in mind, because I was using my screen recorder, that it's a little shaky in the beginning, but just guarantee this entire course is in 1080 at 60 frames per second. So, and you can also blow it up so you can easily view it on your cell phone. And at the end of the course, I'm going to give a few shout outs to some of my students, or I'm going to stop saying students because they've been teaching me some stuff, but course members, right? And uh, if you're one of the uh, students or course members, and I didn't mention your name. Sorry, I didn't have time. But we should be pushing close to 100 students by the end of this month. So, guys, what you're waiting on, we need you. I'm going to just say this once again. This course is not recommended for anybody who does not have any electronics experience at all. Not unless you're just curious and you want to save it for later. Now everything works on the primary side. Okay, so we just follow my mouse here. We get our power cord, our AC coming in, like I showed you, until it gets to, and there's our there's a, the thermistor here, okay, which is like the resistor type, um, should be zero ohms or, 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 um, or six ohms, something like that, low ohms. And right here is our varistor, the shiny blue thing, which is sometimes uh, wrapped around a, a black plastic coating with writing on it. So this is our varistor here and our thermistor here. All right. Our bridge rectifier dial. Okay. So as we come out of the bridge rectifier as DC. Okay. Filter capacitors. All right. Then we get here 
keeps going. Everything's connected for the capacitors. And then I think it's like a little snubber network. Uh, but then when it gets here, this is our transformer. It's our main transformer. This is our secondary side. And right here, we see our standby voltage, okay? So, like I said, we're still concentrating on the primary side now. So, what happens is, this is what happens. The DC volts, which is about 168 volts, right, goes to the winding on the primary side of the transformer. That is shorted, okay, all the way around. And, and so was that one. Now, put my meter in the dial mode. It's probably going to be close to zero. Right? See? No voltage drop. All right? Now, with that being said, with this being shorted, with those two FETs from primary side being shorted, also note that there is a fuse, an additional fuse. That fuse is for our DC circuit. So we have an AC fuse, okay, which is our line fuse for the line. Okay, and then our DC fuse. So this fuse has to be open, I would think, right? So let me just use my beep mode, put it back in beep. So a good fuse is going to beep. Be zero ohms. Now we'll go to this fuse. It is open. See that? No beep. Should be getting a closed circuit, a beep, but that is open. Now, if you get a TV like that with the DC fuse blown, before you replace the fuse, you need to go on both sides of an open fuse and check for a short. So no fuse should be going to ground. Now remember what I said about the capacitor? The negatively the capacitor is usually a good reference point for hot ground, because we're on the hot side of the power supply. So I'm gonna take my one of my leads, middle of the leads. I'm still in beep mode. I go to the negative side of the capacitor. I'm gonna go on both sides of this fuse. That's open. We have a short. Okay? So the reason we have that short is because those two fets were shorted. So look for a short if you get a short on one side of the of an open fuse. So let's talk about our most common failure on any dead power supply board and when i say dead what i mean is that there is absolutely no output voltage on the secondary side or no standby voltage which would then lead to the whole entire tv being dead right with no light or nothing on the front of the tv so dead tv or dead device would be as if the device is unplugged there's no standby light there's no clicking you don't hear anything or see anything uh, on the screen so that means that we are not getting our standby voltage here or any voltage here on the plug that is going to your main board or going to, you know, whatever device that's using this uh, source voltages. So what's going to happen is the MOSFET is going to be shorted. So in a normal troubleshoot procedure, what I will do is if I have a dead power supply board, which means I don't have any standby or output voltage on there. Uh, obviously, I'm going to check the fuse, the AC fuse, or fuses that may be one on the DC side also uh, after this bridge rectifier, okay, in this line right here. All right, the fuses are good. I'm going to check my 168 volts here. All right, if I got that and it's just sitting there, but I don't have a drive signal, then we have a problem with the drive, assuming that the MOSFET uh, most likely is the problem. It's going to be shorted. So, but, I don't, but in normal cases, I don't go through all that. If I'm not getting, if I got a good fuse, a good AC fuse, and I don't have any output at here on this line here, our standby line, then I'm going to start putting my meter in uh, ohms or dial scale or beep and start checking the MOSFETs or FETs on the primary side of the power supply. So MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. So basically a MOSFET is just a power transistor that can handle heavy output loads. Right? Like this transformer here, obviously, right? Or heavy current loads, okay? So 
if we look at this MOSFET here, look at the symbol, it's very easy to understand how it works. It's just a switch, all right? So if we look at the base, I'm sorry, the base, that's on the, that's on the transistor. Okay, that's the base. All right, so like, an, okay, yeah, let's just mention the transistor. So on the transistor, the base is going to close once it's activated through a voltage or a certain current, and then it's going to start taking this voltage at the collector, and it's going to close the collector and emitter and take that voltage so it can start conducting. So let's just keep it simple. We look at the gate here. It looks like a switch. And what happens is when it closes, we're taking now we're taking this 168 volts to what? Ground. Right. So now it's going to start conducting. So this switch is going to keep switching back and forth, right? Several thousand times per second, thus cutting this voltage on and off through reference ground, right? Because this, remember, this is the drain that has the actual source on it or the positive side of the source. And the um, source is ground, right? So we need a source reference or ground reference, right? So I'm going to push this switch close, and now the 168 volts is now going to be, you know, on. And then when the switch is open, the 168 volts is evidently going to be off. So how do you know or how can you identify if your power supply board as a PFC power factor correction circuit on it. It's pretty much very easy. You just look for a transformer on the primary or hot side, whatever you want to call it. You're going to look for a transformer that's not isolated, that's directly on the primary side. Okay, for instance, as we can see, this transformer is right on the isolation line. Okay, so obviously this is a switching transformer. Okay, and obviously the Fed or whatever that's being used to switch it is probably underneath the board. But this transformer right here is totally on the primary side. And this right here is obviously our Fed and our diode. Now let's look and take a look at this power supply here to the right. All right, we're, okay, so I'll just let you look at it and see if you can identify if this has power factor correction or not. You see it? Okay. Right here. This transformer here, or inductor, sometimes, like I said, they will use a transformer but they're only going to be using two pins on each side. So they're using the one winding in the transformer as an inductor. So here is our big inductor, okay, that is totally isolated. I'm sorry, that is not isolated. It's all, all pins are on the primary side. Here, of course, is our switching transformer because the pins are separated between the line, between the isolation line. But as you can see, here is our PFC diode and our PFC switching MOSFET, right? And these, ob these obviously right here are the FETs for the main switching transformer right here, okay? These are the FETs here, okay? So this is our PFC circuit here and here. So in this lesson, let's figure out why that 12 volt line was not being activated when we have the VCC missing for the power factor correction controller IC. So here's a picture of the actual chip. This is not the exact same chip. I couldn't find the data sheet, but this is a similar chip by Sony with the same pinouts. So we already verified that pin 20 was the VCC. Now we have three other crucial pins on here. And so let's get one thing straight before I proceed is that any MOSFET circuit on the power supply uses a chip, controller chip, or a PWM chip. And in order for it to start working, we need, first of all, to have VCC 
or working voltages for that chip to start working. And then the second thing we need after that is we need a drive signal to the gate of the MOSFETs that are switching uh, any transformer on the power supply board. So pin one is PFC out. That is obviously going to the gate pins of the PFC MOSFETs. And we take a look at pins 22 and 24. Those are the outputs for the actual MOSFETs that are switching that big transformer in the middle of the circuit board that is providing the 12 volts power rail on the secondary side going to the main board. Pin 1, PFC out. PFC MOSFET gate driver output. Pins 22, let's look at 20, power supply input, okay. 22 is resonant controller low side MOSFET driver output. And pin 24 is resonant controller high side MOSFET driver output. Here is our bridge rectifier diode, our main one. Here is our PFC inductor, okay? Between pins one and two, it is then going to the PFC proper correction MOSFETs, switching MOSFETs, all right? And then here's our diode, and then here is our big filter capacitor. The VCC dial for the proper correction IC is out of the circuit. So once I touch it, so I have like a little lead stuck in there. So once I touch that dial to that lead, you're gonna see what happens. Everything is going to change. Okay, so I'm gonna do is take this, I got my little small meter, which is free, and the TV is plugged in. Okay, obviously we just have the 166 PFC is off. I also want to show you that we do have VCC on this other dial that is still in the circuit. I'm gonna go to the cathode and see we have 16.5 volts, okay? Right there. Okay, you gonna plug it first. Okay. Plug it back in. There we go. All right. I've got 388, PFC is on. I've got a drive signal at my gate pin of these MOSFETs here. All right, which means it should be switching this transformer. And obviously it is because now I have 12.7 volts on the secondary side right here across this capacitor, 12 volt line. I've disconnected. Drive signal is the first thing they leave, and then the voltage goes back down to 165. All right, guys, what'd you think? You leave me a comment below. And before I forget to mention that we also have a community in our group where you can post and ask questions. And believe me, I do answer all questions, even though I can't get to all my questions on YouTube. I definitely answer questions here, I guess because there's a lot less people, right? And I also post videos on here that I don't have on YouTube. I'm uh, troubleshooting videos or they will be posted here first. Okay, uh, any of my YouTube videos that are not LED videos. And we also have, I just started a private Facebook group. Okay, all right, which is good, who are, good for people who are more familiar with Facebook. And so far this is private. And I, I just started it so I don't have much on here except for a few videos and a few posts but this is where you can also uh, post your business right you know i don't care about that if you sell parts or you offer a specific service power supply war repair or whatever you know you can post it here and if you ask me i think the discounted price that you're going to pay today is well worth the power supply module alone that's just my opinion and let me give some shout outs to 
uh, some of my students. Now, if you're a student already and I didn't shout out your name, uh, I'm going to get you in the next one. But I know these guys here are dead serious. They've completed, watched every module, every, I'm sorry, every lesson faithfully. And they're always giving me feedback. So let me start off with, if I pronounce your name wrong, if I spelled it wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Robbie Acton, much love goes out to Rob. Raymond Alvarado, uh, New York City. Uh, I think he actually called me some months ago. I was like, big dog, when are you going to bring that course on, man? We're waiting. And uh, I actually told Raymond that I was going to give him the course for free once I launched it. And as soon as I launched it, he just went ahead and bought it. All right, so shout out to you, Raymond. Uh, Roman Chirac, Rich Leonard, Sam Scar... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Scarcia. Scar Scarcia. Uh, he's out of Chicago, I believe, the Windy City, where we're at. Uh, Asio Rodell, Jeffrey Smith, Mark Stewart, uh, Ian Turner. He's the last guy that uh, enrolled in the course on record that I see. And he's already blown through all of the modules. And uh, shout out to you, Ian, Travis Wheeler, and Darren. Casey looks like. All right, guys, you guys know what to do. I'll leave the link below in the description. Just hit show more. And until then, guys, I will see you in the course. Big dog out.